Hello. Today, I want to talk about related rates. Um, this is mostly the idea of just applying um, implicit differentiation to word problems, to be honest, um, just giving it, typically giving it some context um, and doing implicit differentiation on, on an equation. Um, here, what we, the setup is typically that you have some equation relating one or more quantities um, that are functions all of the same independent variable, right? Um, typically, the most common um, scenario would be that your independent variable is, t is time, right? Um, you know, time is moving forward and then lots of things are, lots of different quantities are all changing as a function of time, right? Um, it might be a investment example and, you know, maybe your monthly payment, but also your um, your interest rate is changing as time changes, right? Um, maybe your maybe it's a physics example, and the uh, location of two objects in space they both are both changing with um, with time, right? There could be any any number of contexts here, um, but the key idea is that you could differentiate both sides implicitly. Do implicit differentiation on both sides. Um, you don't have to know every quantity as an explicit formula of t. You just treat it as some unknown function of t, um, just like when we did imp implicit differentiation, and we would treat y as some unknown function of x. Same, same story. Um, and this lets you find a relation between these rates. So, for example, to show a very brief example of what I'm talking about here, consider um, the ideal gas law. Right. So PV equals nRT. Right. So this is. This is a law from natural sciences, right? From, from thermodynamics, from chemistry, wherever you want to place it in the, the science world. Um, and here, imagine that we had not just a fixed scenario, but imagine we have some scenario in which the pressure, the volume, and the temperature are all changing. Right, so these are all dependent on T. So as time moves forward, the pressure in the system that we're studying is changing. Right, the volume is changing. Um, and sometimes you'll see people write like P equals P of T to indicate pressure is a function of time, right? V equals V of T, volume is a function of time. And we'll say temperature, big T, is also function of, of time. Um, we'll say N and R are constants, right? So you'll, you could write this, N and R are just real numbers. They're just fixed real numbers. They don't depend on time. Those are just constants, right? So if you want, you could then ask, all right, well, I know how pressure, volume, and temperature are related. How then are the rates of change of temperature, volume, and pressure related? Well, I could differentiate both sides. Once again, implicitly, I don't have a formula like V of T equals T squared. That would be an explicit formula for V. I don't have that. I just have some equations, some relationship between these quantities. So I could differentiate implicitly, right? Do implicit differentiation um, and differentiate both sides with respect to T. What would you get? Well, I'm doing, so I'm doing a derivative of P, which is a function of T, times V, which is a function of T. I'm also doing a derivative of N, R, and then big T, which is a function of little t, right? So if I do this, if I write down here, notice all I did so far was I just copied down this equation and I just noted that, you know, which quantities were functions of T, I put the of T, um, and then I just slapped the DDT on both sides, right? So um, here, what would I do then to evaluate this? Well, look on the left-hand side, I have a product rule. I have a product of two functions of T and I'm differentiating with respect to T. So what would I get? I would get D P D T times V, right? Plus P times D B D T. On the right-hand side, these are constants, so I can actually factor those out of a derivative, and I get just nr ddt. So there we go. There is a relationship 
between. Wow, not what I intended. <laughs> Let's try that box again. Um, there we have it. There would be our answer, right? Better. There's a relationship between not only P, V, and T, but the rates of change of P, V, and T, right? An equation relating the, the P, D, T, the V, D, T, and D, T, D, T. Or so the first T slightly louder than the second T. Cap D, capital T over D, little t. Um, so there's the an example of related rates, right? I took an equation that I had and I differentiated both sides with respect to t and three quantities changing with respect to t and I related their rates, right? So this is why right, I successfully related the rates of change, right? That's why this is called related rates, this, this method. So there we go. So there's a very broad example right here. I didn't have any specific numbers. This is just a, uh, equation from chemistry, right, from thermal, um, and we took its, took its derivative, right? Um, let's, let's do another example, but this let's make much more um, specific. So here um, we want to have a very specific example. Um, this is, I'm a cat owner and like most cat owners, several of my cats really love chasing labels or pointers. Um, so here is a, uh, a, a uh, you know, cat dream that came to me one day is um, suppose you had a little motor on the ceiling of your room. And let's say the, this room is 20 feet across and we're going to put the motor in the middle. All right, so I have a 20 foot wide room and we're going to put it in the middle of the 10 foot high ceiling, right? So this is sort of a side view of our, of our room here, right? And we're gonna place a motor and the motor is going to rotate at, we'll say at 30 um, revolutions per minute, right? So this motor will complete 30 revolutions per minute. And you know, I'm imagining that on the motor, there's of course a laser pointer attached, right? As it's revolving. So the laser shines down here and then, you know, a little bit later it shines down here, shines down here, right? And now it shines down here. And, you know, this of course would be just wonderful because then when I'm like, you know, you're going to connect it to, uh, uh, you know, hey Google or to Alexa, right? And then, uh, and that way you're, when you're at work and uh, your, your cat really wants to play laser pointer, you can have it activate for a little bit and your cat could chase a laser pointer across the across the living room right so this is uh this is my my cat toy dream um so suppose you had this motor rotating right at 30 rpms um say you want before you install this you want to check the safety of this right and in particular say you know your cat is just absolutely mad for lasers and you want to make sure that your cat oh god why did I even start this? Am I really going to try to draw a cat? Apparently, I think we're, I think we're, we've gone too far. We have to try to draw it now. Okay, there we go. There's my, my terrible cat. Poor, the poor thing. That we know this cat is going to chase this laser pointer as fast as it can. Um, and it might bump into the wall, right? The being realistic, the cat is not going to be paying attention to uh, the object in front of it, right? The cat might crash into the wall. So we want to make sure the dot isn't going too fast when the dot reaches the the corner there, right? Because we know our cats would, of course, prioritize catching the dot um, over its own its own physical safety. So this is why we're going to test the, we're going to calculate the, the speed of the dot before we actually install this toy and let it rip, right? So, um, so that's what I want to know. If the motor rotates at um, 30 RPMs, right? How fast is the dot moving? When it reaches that corner. Right at the corner. Right, so I want to know right here when the right when the laser reaches that corner. I want to know how how fast is it moving. Right, that's that's the question. Right, so how at that moment in time how fast. That's, that's our question here. So how can I get some sense of what's going on here? Well, let me 
um, give some labels to the, the parts of this diagram. So what I want to do is I want to draw a moment in time before um, it actually reaches the corner, just to have a slightly more generic idea of what's going on. So here's 10 feet up there, 10 feet, 10 feet, right? And then let's imagine the dot has already gone past vertical, right? So it, the dot was here, you know, and then it moved here, and then it moved here, right? And now the dot is going to, let's say it's already past vertical, and it's at some angle theta past vertical, right? So let's, and this is a huge part of solving a problem like this, is just giving names to the important quantities, right? So let theta equal the angle past vertical, right? And then I, what I'm really co concerned about is how fast is this length right here growing, right? So I better give a name to that also. So let's let W be the um, distance from the center line of the room to the, the dot, the laser point dot, laser pointer dot. Right. Um, so here we can make a red laser pointer dot. There's our, so the distance from the center line of the room to the laser pointer dot. And why am I labeling these two quantities? Well, besides them being sort of natural geometric quantities in this figure, um, they're also really important in the sense that um, theta is what I know something about, and W is what I don't know, something, what I want to know something about, right? So you definitely want to give names to anything that you have information about to hopefully use it, and names to anything you, that you seek information about to hopefully find it, right? Um, so that's why this is a good choice. You know, if you want to say, well, why didn't I label the hypotenuse, for example? Well, because I don't really care how fast the hypotenuse is growing. Um, and also, I don't have any particular information ready about how fast the hypotenuse is growing. So don't give it a name, right? So, so um, you know, we're labeling the most relevant quantities to our to our situation here. Um, so, um, in particular, what are we what are we given? We're given we're given d theta dt, right? I know how that angle changes with respect to time because we were given thirty RPMs, right? So I have thirty. If it's thirty RPMs, um, that's thirty revolutions. Now it's an angle. So usually we, you would measure a revolution in radians, right? So a revolution is two pi radians. So I have two, two pi radians um, per unit of time, which in this case, we said it was 30 revolutions per minute, right? So each minute, it completes 30 revolutions. And 30 revolutions is 30 times two pi radians. So that's, um, so that's d theta dt, that's a quantity that we're given here in the problem, right? So we're given this, I want to find, this is another way to state this problem, I want to find dw dt, right? Find the rate at which the dot is traveling, the rate at which w is growing, right? Will be dw dt. Find this quantity, um, when what? Well, when theta is 45 degrees, right? Or we could say when theta is pi over four, because if you look at the special situation that we really care about, see that theta is gonna be pi over four when, because this is 10 and 10, right? So it'll be, we want a 45 degree angle there because I want those two sides to be equal, um, right? So when theta is pi over four, that will give me, um, I want dw dt when theta equals pi over four, right? That's, that's the situation I really care about, right? Because I'm saying how fast I want, Right, I want dw dt, but at the special time when theta equals pi over four. That's our, our situation. So this is the this is a little more generic. Just the picture that I drew, just to kind of represent the situation. This is a this is specific um, to the situation we're really wondering about. Red dot there to indicate to show what we're looking at. Um, okay, so now let's do some math and solve this. So just like up here, I had. You know the ideal gas law relating these quantities before I differentiated both sides with respect to time. Here, I I need some relationship between these quantities. Well, let's see. I have what do I have in this picture? I have I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. Um, I have a right triangle, and W is the opposite side on that right triangle. I also have 
the adjacent side in that very triangle. So if I have an opposite and an adjacent side labeled with an angle and a triangle, then the natural relationship to use is just the definition of the tangent, right? So the equation that I'm going to use is that the fact that tangent theta equals um, opposite over adjacent, right? So tangent theta equals w over 10. That's our that's our equation, is the definition of tangent. It relates the quantity of interest in this problem. So in a different problem, you'll probably use a different equation, right? But just find some equation that relates those quantities that you have. You know, if you're trying to relate a leg, a leg, and a hypotenuse, then maybe you want to use the Pythagorean theorem to relate them, right? Here, I was trying to relate an angle, and a leg, and a leg. So tangent made sense, right? Um, but so there's our, there's our equation. Um, now I can differentiate both sides with respect to t. And if we do that, what happens? Well, remember, I'm treating everything as an unknown function of t. So I have d dt of tan theta equals d dt of w over 10. And I get on the left-hand side, I'm going to get secant squared theta times, right? So I'm differentiating tangent theta. And then I'm going to multiply by d theta dt. Why? Chain rule. Right, this is this is literally the chain rule. I don't know what theta is, right, as a function, as explicitly as a function of t. I mean, or I could, but I, I don't currently have it written as as a, a explicit function of t, right? Um, so let, differentiate the outer, right? Tangent becomes secant squared. Leave the inner alone. Just leave it as theta, and then multiply by the derivative of the inner d theta dt. Right, so that's what we did there. Now here I have a constant. I have a one tenth that I could factor out of the that expression. So that leaves me with d, d dt of w, which is just a kludgy way of writing w, dw dt, right? So factor out the one tenth and then just call it dw dt. So that's, so there we go. I've now, this is great. I now have an equation in which I related their rates, right? This is the related rates. I related the rates of change of theta and w. Um, I am given that d theta dt is actually constant, right? d theta dt, we know that quantity. It's this, it's this, um, it's this 60 radians per minute, right? So I can bring that down here and I can say, okay, this is um, 60, sorry, 60 pi, 60 pi radians per minute. There's a pi too. 60 pi radians per minute. And I can also say um, one tenth is just a tenth, right? Here I have dw dt, right? And then I also have secant squared of theta. And you could, you still get a true relationship if you leave that just as secant squared of theta. But I have one theta value that I really care about, right? I really want to know. I don't care too much how fast the cat is going in the middle of the room. I really care at that corner how fast is the cat going. So um, plug in theta equals pi over four, right? Because this is this equation, right? All I did here was I subbed in theta equals pi over four, and I subbed in the known value for our little rotary motor, right? Okay. Next, what do I have? Well, secant at pi over four is root two, right? So this is the this is root two squared. Um, here I have sixty pi of radians per minute, right? And I'm going to multiply the ten over. Um, and the ten, remember the ten was ten feet, right? That was uh, measuring the, the width. Um, this is dw dt. And I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. Um, and I'm also going to I'm going to solve for dw dt, right, by moving that 10 over. I'm also going to write dw dt equals, let's see what we have here. I have root 2 squared is 2, right? So I have 2 times 60 is 120 times 10 is 1,200 pi um, feet per minute, right? And notice what happened to radians. Well, radians are utiless, right? Um, so you can throw away the radians. But then feet are on top and minutes are on the bottom. This is good because what am I looking for? Dw dt. I'm looking for a rate of change of length with respect to time, right? W is a length, t is a time. 
So the fact that the units here, when I did the algebra, came out to feet per minute, that's great. That's a good thing, right? That means we're, we're doing something sensible. Um, or at least it doesn't guarantee that we aren't. Um, so that is our, um, our formula for dw dt, right? We did, we did it, that's the rate of change. That's how fast w is changing. Um, and thus how fast the cat will run at when the dot hits the corner. Um, now this is maybe not a unit feet per minute. I don't know if that's a unit that we have uh, always great intuition for, right? Um, but you can convert this pretty easy just using dimensional analysis or factor label, whatever you want to call it. Um, we could convert this pretty easy to easily to a more um, familiar unit, right? So you could convert minutes to say hours, right? By doing, um, you could do 60 minutes in one hour, right? It would convert, that would cancel the minutes. Right, and replace them with hours. And then we could convert the feet to miles, right, if we wanna get in miles per hour, which is maybe a more, more commonly used unit of speed, right? So this is, um, right, so we could do 5,280 feet in one mile, right? And so now we could do this, we could just say, okay, now now just grind this into a calculator, right? Uh, you know, or, or get a, if you wanna do a, a estimate for pi, do the arithmetic by hand, of course, of course you can, um, but um, for sake of, sake of time, right? If we crunch this into a calculator, we have this is roughly um, 42.84 miles per hour. So uh, morals of the story is we should slow our motor down, right? The 30 RPMs is a terrible idea. Um, the laser dot will be going 42, almost 43 miles per hour when it hits the, the, um, the corner, which is probably not a safe speed for a cat to impact the wall at um and because yeah yeah certain cats right they will just go as as fast as that dot goes is how fast they're gonna go so they're cheetah like uh, sprinting speed so um right so that's the the moral of this problem is we reduce the speed of that motor quite a bit drastically um so there we go now we solved our um our laser pointer problem and remember what is, what is the key the key is that you find, you know, we had these quantities. Theta was changing with respect to time. W was also changing with respect to time. So find some equation that relates those quantities that are both functions of time and then differentiate both sides with respect to T, right? That's the commonality to a related rates, related rates problem. So great. Thanks so much. And good luck building this. If you're the uh, handy type and a cat lover, I, I hope you create this device. Thanks.